papers, but also time with me this afternoon. Um, I'm glad to have the opportunity to talk to you a little bit about a collection that I've been working with um, for the entire time that I've been here at Rochester uh, since um, 2016. Um, what has culminated into, into um, and well, continues to, it's a, a massive collection, but it continues and it continues on uh, what we have a major exhibition right now at the Memorial Art Gallery just up the road. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the collection, uh, the exhibition, um, and, and more. And I hope that you'll find it interesting and entertaining and um, moving and all of those things. So my role, um, as anyone said, I'm Jessica, Jessica Locker Feldman. I'm the exhibitions and special projects manager at the University of, Rochester, of Rochester's River Campus Libraries Department of Rare Books, Special Collections and Preservation. And I'm also the curator of record for the AIDS Education Posters Collection. And I've been working with that collection since I started right at the beginning um, of my time at Rochester. And I work with the collection in many, many different ways. Um, I've worked on every aspect of the project that is the exhibition right now, and as well as the book, which I got a copy of right here, um, which is both a book about the collection and a book um, that serves as the catalog of the exhibition. And we've done a ton of really interesting related activities that they will continue. Um, different kinds of talks. We had a film screening last night at the Little. Uh, there are lots of events that are planned around this project. But I want to start uh, first in talking about the collection itself. Um, the, the exhibition at MAD is about 165 posters, and it's in the largest gallery in the Memorial Art Gallery. Um, it's over 5,000 square feet. Uh, but the collection itself is over 8,000 posters. And at the center of that really is um, the person who brought this collection together with, with a lot of help from a lot of, I, I think of it as being, as deputizing people, that he brought people together to help build this collection. And that is uh, Dr. Edward Atwater. He passed away in May of 2019 at the age of 93. And then a little over three decades, he amassed Actually, just under three decades, he amassed over 8,000 posters. Um, and it started in 1990. I love this quote, and I often find myself reading it because I want to say, poop de doo, which is, <laughs> it's used words like that. So, and I, I just, I'm going to read it because I, I, I love to read it and say it. Um, this is a quote from The Atlantic that he, when he told about, um, I call it sort of a superhero origin story. I saw an orange poster that showed two disembodied hands opening a condom wrapper when I was on the red line, the one that runs between from true Boston to Harvard. I thought that was remarkable. It was about 1990, and when I was in medical school 35 years earlier, it was illegal to teach anything about contraception. The one lecture we had, I recall vividly, it made a lot of hoop de doo. We closed the doors and acted as if the police were going to rape. In those days, uh, that was illegal and forbidden, and so I thought that the poster was really striking. I went home, called the public health department, and said, could you send me some of these posters? And I did, and that's how it started. And that makes it seem very, very simple. If you, if you look at the collection, which, as I said, is over 8,000 posters, plus another 6,000 plus duplicates, so um, a lot of posters, as well as about 40 plus linear feet of archival material, including how he built the collection, how he documented how it was built, he kept track of everything, including reimbursing people from all over the world for posters. So if that as a as a librarian and archivist, I find extremely interesting to look at kind of the mechanisms behind how the collection was built. So that's another part of the quote. Uh, so the collection itself, as I said, it's about 8,000 posters and counting from 130 countries in over 75 languages and dialects uh, from all 50 states in the United States. And as I said, because I think it's so interesting, it is a case study for building a collection from scratch with vision and purpose. And Dr. Atwater um, was an amazing person. 
in many different ways. He was a, a, a brilliant medical historian and a, a wonderful uh, family man and a friend and community member. Uh, but he was also wired as a collector. He was born to collect. And it's amazing to, um, as, as somebody who works with archival collections and sees how collections are built, um, it's really, to me, a case study for building a collection from scratch with vision and purpose. That superhero origin story of being on the subway and saying, oh my, you know, what am I looking at? And this, this is a, a total shift in the way that we think about um, public health. We are, we are, this poster to me, to him, um, changes everything um, in terms of how we think about informing ourselves and informing each other about staying alive. Um, and that's what um, the urgency behind the AIDS pandemic and how it's represented again and again and again in so many different ways with these posters. Um, so as I said, built in scrap, from scratch with um, the, the, the goal is to build a collection that, that um, is global in, in its scope, that um, documents the AIDS crisis from the earliest days through today and beyond. And though Dr. Atwater passed away in 2019, we still build the collection. Um, and the collection is housed in a rare books and special collections library, not in a museum, um, and is used very regularly in so many different ways. So I'm going to talk a little bit about how I work with faculty and students and researchers and artists and people from all over to um, use these posters in a different way. Um, and then the, the additional benefit, um, and I'll talk, I'll mention a little bit about that, but I think that that so much about uh, working with this collection has informed the way that we can think about COVID-19. And I think we're still obviously in the thick of that with that mask right here. Um, and I'll put it back on when I start milling around. But uh, we really, um, when you see these posters and then we think about what we've been going through in the past couple of years, there's a resonance there that um, I think it actually allows younger people to understand the magnitude of HIV AIDS uh, in a way that they couldn't have understood before March of 2020 when everything shut down. So the other piece about the collection that I want to mention before I start showing you posters is that one of the visions that Dr. Atwater had was not just to build this collection and then gift it to the University of Rochester, but he wanted every single poster digitized and made accessible. So on the web, we have a, a website, um, it's aeb.library.rochester.edu. I'm sure you can get that in um, text or even in email. Uh, but it's very easy to find just AIDS education. If you Google AIDS education posters, Rochester, you will find it. Um, and we add every single poster to the site, including rich metadata. So you can actually, if you wanted to just look at, look at posters from Rwanda, or you want to just look at posters that have the red ribbon, you can use keyword searching to um, identify specific um, elements. And as I said, they're not in a museum, they are in a library, and they get used all the time. And we teach with them in so many different ways. I'm going to show a little bit of some examples of how we've been teaching with the posters. Um, and the other thing that I think is really critical to understand and what, as I work with the posters and work with the collection and work in many different ways, um, like COVID-19, HIV AIDS has affected the entire world. Um, it affects everyone. And the posters are so valuable as a teaching tool and as a, as a mechanism for understanding human communication, which sounds very lofty, but it, it really, if you think about it in the macro and in the micro, it's both of those. It's, it really truly shows us how um, we meet people. The posters meet people where they are, um, where they were at the time, and get critical information across, whether it be through scare tactics or um, dispelling myths or making you laugh or scaring the crap out of you. All of those things are present in those posters. And you'll see that um, in the exhibition. I urge everybody to go and see it. It really is 
humbling and beautiful and moving um, to me um, and I hope to everyone else. So here are a few examples, uh, and I'm going to show, show a lot more. Uh, when I think about meeting people where they are, when we think about um, the kinds of ways that we grab people's attention, we are such a visual I mean, people are, are very visual. I mean, if you can see, if you're a sighted, a sighted person, you um, are attracted to things that look a certain way. We all are driven by certain aesthetics. We um, respond to different messaging. Um, certainly in the age of the internet and social media and television, that is very, very much the case. So here are three really great examples of, um, of posters from three different parts of the world. The one on the left is from Australia, and that is an indigenous condom man, um, indigenous uh, Australian. Uh, the one in the middle is from China, and it's got these wonderful little um, virus guys on the bottom. And the one on the right is from San Diego, and it is, it is very much of the time, it's very 80s. Uh, but, you know, you want to look at them, you want to, to see what they have to say. So I wanted to show some examples of under, that, that allow us to kind of understand the global pandemic through posters. Um, and I want to start with um, Right at Home. These are two posters from Rochester. Both of them are exhibition posters, one from World AIDS Day, um, and they're, you know, they give us a lot of interesting information. They are very much, um, you know, they, they definitely have a look to them. You know, everything has a look to it. Um, and then here are a couple of other ones from Manchester that are much more informational on um, the Names Project event. Um, and then a very much kind of a, a, a flyer, um, a concert, a benefit concert from 1994. Um, to benefit the University of Rochester's yeah, pediatric HIV. Um, so these are the kinds of things that are in the collection that um, there are a lot of things from our community. Um, but as we expand out, and I just I have a couple of examples from the United States, but there are literally, literally posters from every single state in the country. Um, these are two really interesting ones. There's a whole series of pregnant men, which I think are very, very interesting. And that is kind of a way to, you're not really pregnant, but it's obviously, it's a way to get um, attention to think about, you know, if, would you, how would you behave differently if this, if you were going to be carrying a child in your room, you know, um, which I think is really, really interesting. Um, and again, this is about moving people where they are getting attention. And I think it's kind of like make no, um, there's no quiz, but I just want to whiz through and show you um, some of these things. Uh, there are a lot of really great series. Um, there are lots of different creators that did um, a whole series of posters. I'm going to show a couple of other series as well. This is from uh, the UK, and these are all focused on young people and indigenous drug use. And what I find so interesting that we see again and again with these posters that it's not about judgment. It really is about behaviors and recognizing um, in these posters and in many, many others, you simply are not, um, you're not being preached to. They're not, not often. You're not being told um, to not use drugs. You're being told if you're going to do this and we know that you're going to do this, then there's um, there are things that you should be doing which have to do with um, cleaning needles and including your, um, and not sharing needles and those kinds of things, which are so critical to the conversation around how HIV is um, transmitted to, from one person to another. So this uh, the poster on the left is from Rwanda. Um, and I think it's really great where it's, it's kind of a mixture of messages. So the, the top two bands are um, basically representing abstinence um, on both parts, so both hands are saying nope. Um, on the in the middle chunk is uh, multiple partners, nope. And then the bottom one is let's do it, but there's a condom, and then okay, um, which I think is really interesting. And the poster on the right is from Senegal, and it you know it's very much like a health poster where it shows a healthy body, 
a body that has that is infected at least and then this kind of third stage, which is a skeleton, which you see again and again as representing um, death and loss. Um, I, I have to talk about Canada because I'm routinely amazed at the incredible, very the, the, the richness of the messaging and um, uh, uh, from the Canadian posters. And I just pulled a couple of them. This, the one on the left is both in um, English, in the we forget the, it's called oh, Chippewa. And then on the right is a very simple, beautiful, um, clear, crisp message. So you see a lot of bilingual posters, a lot. There's one poster that um, is in the exhibition. We have it in the exhibition in only in what, one version, and it is in um, Aramaic, but we have it in, uh, uh, I think it's in nine or 12 different languages, just that one thing in the poster. And it's, you know, it was used for, it was for um, Ontario, for Toronto, and it really um, focusing on lots of different populations with the same message or similar message, uh, but not, um, but given different languages um, in, in a spin. Um, here are a couple that are a little, I didn't go, there are some that are extremely, I, I use the term lush worthy, and that's probably an instant, a, a, a very G-rated version of what they are. Um, but again, it's really about meeting people where they are um, and, and sharing information to different communities. So the poster on the left is German, the poster on the right is from Spain. Um, there are groups within the gay community all over the world that are involved in different types of looks and different types of lifestyles. So the leather lifestyle or the bear lifestyle, um, the poster on the right is, for, is just geared towards um, the bear community and the, and the poster on the left is geared towards the leather community in those countries. Um, and then you have posters that are, that really give messages like um, AIDS doesn't discriminate. And you see that again and again the poster on the left from the Philippines and the poster on the right from Hong Kong, which is um, you know, very, very tame and very, um, I don't have the translation in front of me, but um, it really, it's about signing a petition of, around um, behavior of HIV. The next poster set is uh, on the left, a poster from Israel. Um, and it's kind of hard to see, but the, the image is a person wrapped in plastic. Um, as a way of kind of talking about, we don't have to be, this is not the extreme that we have to take, but there are things that we can do. And the poster on the right is from Kuwait. Uh, the poster on the left is from the Netherlands. There are lots of really beautiful, interesting, artsy posters from places like Belgium, the Netherlands, France, um, Italy, that are really um, kind of abstract and very, very interesting. Um, and then the poster on the right is from France. And you know, that's, it's, you know, it's, that captures kind of a relationship, um, a, a black and white relationship. It seems very French to me. Um, these two posters, the one on the left, um, funnily, funnily enough, is from the Virgin Islands, and it's about abstinence, so I couldn't resist to put that one there, um, with a, a well known um, singer from uh, the Caribbean. And then the poster on the right is, um, it's a it's both uh, an AIDS poster and an advertisement for common use with a well-known um, soccer player from Haiti. So I'm gonna just talk a little bit about how I have used the posters, we have used the posters um, over the years in the library setting and beyond before I get into talking a little bit more about the exhibition itself. So when I first came to Rochester, um, there was a wonderful undergraduate student who was a Russian maker, and she was working on um, looking at representation of um, women and uh, particularly sex work, because that's really what shows up in Russian posters. Um, you know, I, I just showed you some audience, you know, different audiences. There are posters that are geared towards strippers. There are posters that are geared towards sex workers. There are posters that are geared towards people who participate in um, sexual tourism. Uh, this is a, a poster that is, is focused on, on, on uh, sex work. 
and the student did this really like this amazing presentation about the, the kind of the style of Russian women's posters and how that kind of um, melded with um, elements of Russian popular culture. Uh, so this is one poster uh, from that, and she's now a doctoral student elsewhere um, and doing great things. So in addition to, um, and this also just happens to be Russian, but we've worked with a ton of different classes. You know, there's lots of um, foreign language education, of course, um, at the University of Rochester. So we've worked with students and faculty to do translation projects to make those posters more accessible. Um, so Russian, French, Chinese, um, and several other languages. It's been a great experience to work with students in, in that the experience of doing translation um, and having their work um, be beneficial to the others. So here are a few posters. Um, I'm going to just talk through some of the ways, some of the things that the, the larger sweeping elements of how the posters kind of work in the classroom. Uh, I've done a lot with uh, linguistic anthropology and um, and linguistics, and looking at the way language is used, um, the way that messaging comes across, this poster is from Ghana. Thinking and looking about re at representation of, um, of things like condoms, uh, this is an Israeli poster. Um, I don't really have a image here, but I work very closely with a faculty member, Jennifer Piper, who is a musicologist and has done a lot around HIV AIDS, especially in um, Zimbabwe. And um, we've done a lot of really interesting things with her students. Uh, I, I did a great class actually with RIT where um, they designed book covers, mock-up book covers. It was a graphic design class. Um, so looking at how effective um, these posters are in communicating um, through graphic representation through um, advertising in language. How do we um, share the information we want to share? This is a really, this was one of Dr. Atwater's favorite posters, and it's kind of complex, and there's a lot written there, but it's kind of a triple entendre. It says, you can't read it, Venice was in a car accident last night, only she doesn't know it yet. It's kind of a, like a one, two, three punch where you see what's going on and you think about unprotected sex, Pregnancy, um, HIV, um, alcohol, and drugs, and all of that is represented in this poster. Um, it's a very powerful one that really um, kind of sticks with you. And then on the other side of things, um, this is one of the last posters that Dr. Alwater and I acquired together. Um, and, and thinking about HIV AIDS um, and its posters around philanthropy and public health, there is so much that has been done to, um, to make people aware and, and to open people's pockets around um, the absolute need for uh, research and care and research. All of those kinds of things. This was a poster from 1983 from the Gay Men's Health Crisis. It was a fundraiser at, um, at the Lumen Brothers in Wellingwood. It was a fundraiser for HIV AIDS for the Gay Men's Health Crisis, um, but it was at Madison Square Garden, so that is no small feat to pull that off. Um, and then I, you know, these are some really uh, just a few examples. There's a playbill, a Japanese movie poster from the movie Philadelphia um, with Denzel Washington and Tom Hanks. Um, this amazing, another fundraiser which has this unbelievable lineup of, of female singers, including Elaine Stritch and Beth Miller, um, Andrea Martin, Patty McCollum, and Lady um, Kazan, well, uh, which is it's another really fun event. <laughs> and Andrea McCollum, and it's not that event, but it's certainly really fun. Um, and then, you know, some, some interesting surprises about. Um, how people respond to AIDS. And I, I really love this poster because it, it's, it, you know, it's, it, it's a lot of things. But um, this is for AIDS Walk New York um, with a picture of his tea and a quote from him that says, I walk because these are my friends and these are things just make a call. And um, the fact that this, this tea also echoes the fact that 
phase really does affect everyone, and that having a voice and making sure that people um, understand and move away from uh, stigma and those kinds of things is really, really critical. And you know, there's some really kind of interesting posters, and there's a lot in the exhibition that focus on these myths. This is a, I, I found this a really weird one, but um, it's from Alaska and it says, go ahead, spread the word if you can get the news from Alaska State Bird, which is, uh, you know, a, a pun. I don't think Alaska State Bird is actually a mosquito, um, but there are lots of posters from all over the world that talk about how you can't get it. It's including toilet seats and doorknobs and mosquitoes, et cetera. And as I mentioned a little bit earlier, I wanted to point out um, this ongoing relevance uh, between uh, the connection between COVID and um, HIV AIDS, not so much as actual illnesses in the sense, but more in the sense of how um, HIV has, through the posters has, and through our public consciousness, has informed the way that we think about on other things. And I was very much stricken by um, seeing the very famous Gatesgate poster, which is um, a really well known uh, act, up, the act Up mobilized poster uh, designed by the Grand Prix Design Collective um, and using it again and again and again to, um, to get information out that kind of echoes what was going on in the 80s um, with that same kind of messaging but using that very unique um, neon green and hot pink um, to talk about COVID. Or there's another example of instead of um, Trump or Winnie the Pooh's head, it's uh, Bill de Blasio's head and it says de Blasio closed schools now. And that was right after COVID started when things were really when things were when the schools needed to be closed and they were closed. So um, seeing that to me speaks to the fact that that image has crept into the public conscious in a, consciousness in a way that um, is really, really important. And, um, and it's going to be very interesting and important to keep track of those parallels as we move forward, as we continue to focus direction and document. So I want to just talk a little bit about the exhibition, and I urge everybody to take the opportunity to go and see it. Um, it's up through June 19th uh, this year at the Memorial Art Gallery, um, and we hope, I'm saying this out loud, but we really hope that it will travel um, outside of Rochester in the future, so we're, we're looking at um, possible ways to do that. So no, nothing is at all, at all determined yet, but it's a real hope. So this is the title wall, and I'm going to give a shout out to, and this was you know, a, a huge project with so many people involved. My dear uh, colleague and friend, Travis Johansson is the exhibition designer. It is really, really beautiful. The show is so moving. Um, I worked really closely with Donald Albrecht, who is our outside curator, um, who's from the Museum of the City of New York, and he's done a ton of shows. Um, for many, many years, and it was just amazing to work with them and to shape this narrative and to work on this book as well. Um, and as I said, and I've said it a bunch of times, but the, in the exhibition, you'll see this, that messaging is what it's all about, and messaging really, really matters. Um, and it's also really important that I point this out. When I, when I do uh, tours through the exhibition, and when I think about this exhibition, it's really, you know, it's very, very sterile to see something like an AIDS poster framed in behind a glass and on the wall, like a piece of art. And it is, you know, I, they are art, uh, but there, there are lots of other things as well. So thinking about, uh, I think that one of the things that is important that when you see the exhibition and when you think about these posters is that you want to imagine them in situ, you want to imagine them in the wild. So in the wild, in this case, um, you see somebody about to be arrested and dragged off in a protest in New York. Um, 
very much using that poster um, in part of the demonstration. I've seen documentaries where those poster, posters are mounted on foam core and they're used as percussive movement instruments. So when you have hundreds of people holding up signs and banging on the back of them and saying, act up by AIDS and using them as drums, it's a very different experience than seeing things framed neatly in a row in an exhibition. So I think that you know one of the reasons why um, we called it up against the walls because these posters were hung everywhere on light poles, on um, tweet pasted onto the sides of buildings. They were in bathhouses and bulletin boards and bars and health departments and clinics. So it's important to think about that when you see the posters and think about the, those messages, think about the audiences, um, who is the poster speaking to, um, all of that is really, really important. So I, I think it's really critical to, to put the poster itself in context. So seeing it kind of against the wall or on the ground, the way this one is, um, really speaks to their original intent. And here's just a few examples that are um, that are really great. Um, one of Dr. Atwater's favorite is a series that um, they're also Canadian, the Cover Your and the Booster, and there's also one that says Protect Your, and it's a cat, a pink cat. Um, if you love those. And, um, the one that says you can you can get into your drinking fountain, um, that is uh, also a Canadian poster. And it's um, there are a lot of them like this that are actually uh, the front side is English and then the verso, which means the front and back is the same. Um, one side is English and one side is French. Um, the poster on the right um, is from Nashville, and there's a whole series with lots of country country music stars. I think I can think of that as maybe um, Billy Ray Cyrus, who doesn't have really change his name, but Miles well, Cyrus is dad. Um, and a bunch of other people like our books, and they have all these quotes. Um, and they're, they're very much, they are Nashville posters, Nashville centric. They speak to, you know, a lot of people will be like, oh, I don't care what Billy Ray Cyrus has to say, but a lot of people will be like, oh, Billy Ray Cyrus said this, okay, well, I'm going to pay attention. So this is just a, an example, it's a weird example, but it is an example. I also see the posters, they are art, as I said. And um, there's so much that, that centers around activism and the effect of activism that um, came out of the HIV AIDS, uh, the absolute necessity to make change, uh, to get people to, to stand up and, and make direct action in order to change what was going on in the world, um, in our country, in terms of funding and passing legislation and um, Lots of lots of other things, so making the government do things, making medical um, the medical community stand up, uh, making um, drug testing happen a lot faster. And this, if you go to the mag or if you just drive down Goodman, you'll see um, there's a 25 by 25 foot corner of the silence equals death uh, image. Um, we had the speaker, Ingram Finkelstein, who was one of the um, Science Equals Death Collective designers, um, who was here a couple of weeks ago at the University of Rochester, speaking about the experience. So this, this poster itself um, is, is such an unbelievably interesting, interesting, fascinating, important element. And I think that everybody here has seen this before. There are versions upon versions of this in other languages. It's been co-opted and morphed into other things, kind of like the AIDS gate poster, but in different ways. Um, and the history behind it is so fascinating. Uh, if you don't know, I urge you just you can read more about it. Um, but that, that pink triangle is the reverse of the pink triangle that was used in the Holocaust to identify um, homosexuals. In conservation camps, so there's a, there are layers of importance and significance um, in the image and what it represents. So, um, just a, a really really important story. And I do want to give a shout out to um, 
our dearly departed Jeremy Chung, who was assistant who he passed away in July, but he, one of his ideas was we need to get a banner outside and make the space of his back to be bigger than life. And there it is. So thank you, Jeremy. Um, so again, it's about specific audiences and specific messages. So uh, the poster on the left from Sub-Saharan Africa, the poster on the right from I'm just guessing now, but you can see, but I think it's um, it might be Norway or Sweden. I should know this, but I'm now my eyes are not able to see. But you can see there's a very different, um, a very different vibe, you know, in, in, in just the way that the people are placed and the message that you see. Even if you don't understand the language, you're you're definitely um, clued into what's going on. And I I want to mention also there's a there's a deep history of um, of the health posters starting from around World War One or a little bit before. Um, so the historical context is part of the exhibition, but also part of the way we understand this kind of information. So the poster on the left is an AIDS poster. The poster on the right is an anti-smoking poster. And here, the poster on the left, um, one thing that you'll see again and again when we think about um, taking care of others and being um, present for others, you see a lot of hands touching other people. And these are really good examples. The one on the left is an AIDS poster, and you see the, 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 the hands. The poster on the right is a French tuberculosis poster, and you see the kind of out of the picture caregiver's hands on the afflicted person. One of the things that also shows up in the exhibition, you will see it again and again in the posters. And again, there's over 8,000 of them, so you see lots of things. Um, but I, I see a lot of different patterns. And one of them is this um, really well known art um, being used again and again as ways to connect um, to the present and to connect to the story of. Um, you know, it, it kind of it harkens back to the use of the hands, but you see the Sistine Chapel, um, the God of Man, instead of just the fingers, it is there's a common there. And there are so many posters that use that um, that design element. And as I mentioned before, with that strip of posters about um, IV drug use from the UK, this is a Swiss series um, that uses this. Um, condom, the O, the pink condom, and there are many, many posters. There's actually, they use that pink O as a sun in some of them, so there's a whole series of those, and it's really, really effective when you see them together, or even not. So effective that we actually used that um, the condom, that image of the condom in the, on the walls behind, one of the walls in the, the on the wall behind some of the frame that was in the show. So I would be remiss if I didn't talk a little bit about the book. Um, it's I, if it's I feel like it's really beautiful. <laughs> of course, I'm biased as a co-editor. I'm extra proud of these really hot pink, um, these hot pink end papers. I don't know if it shows you um, color driven and and that's okay. Um, so the, the book is a lasting testament to the exhibition, um, and it really touches on aspects of the collection. Uh, there are some really great essays in there um, and really good information, and it really is beautiful. We were so lucky to work with our IT press on this. Uh, they just did an amazing job, and also working with Dr. Bill Valenti, um, who is, is such an amazing person and such a um, force in our community around um, HIV AIDS and the work, the incredible work that Trillian Roth does. And then finally, I'm just about to wrap up. Um, I want to uh, talk a little bit about the next frontiers. And I think that it's really critical that, like with the, with the COVID posters, that I think it's very, very important to have um, the opportunity to continue to build the collection going forward. Um, and so much of what is now 
available as you can possibly probably imagine. So much is now very much um, digital or digital material. So um, the AIDS poster has kind of been, um, I wouldn't say it's extinct, but I would say that there's much more of a chance to see um, a version of the AIDS poster as a billboard or as a digital image um, as part of an advertisement in um, a, an app or um, a website. So I think that that really one of the things that we hope to do going forward is to crawl, uh, do web crawling on um, digital spaces and document what is being used in communities digitally to communicate where we are in HIV AIDS and how things um, look going forward. And I'm just going to wrap up here um, by saying thank you so much for having me here today. And um, I think it's really a very easy email address. It's jlf at rochester.edu. Um, if you have any questions at all about the posters or questions about um, the collection as a whole, um, or if you just want to make sure that we um, did say it's uh, AEP is, is in AIDS education posters. Dot library. Dot UA. Dot UA. I can't be very just that. Library. Dot watch. UA is University of Alabama, where I used to work for a long time ago. Um, wow. JL at that Rochester. Dot UA. Um, AEP. Dot library. Dot Rochester. Dot UA is the web address. Um, and you can just Google AIDS Education Posters Rochester um, to, to take a look at it. I encourage folks to um, see the exhibition um, and to uh, think a lot about um, what these posters represent and how the bottom line is that um, we're still in the midst of, uh, of a crisis just because um, we, we don't have a cure yet and uh, we want to see um, the continued research and um, caring for folks and to understand um, just how important this crisis has um, had such a, a such a huge effect on so many for so long and so much loss. Um, I, I think there's there are levels of hope and um, and pride in, in the exhibition as well. So it's 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 both moving and challenging. So um, I hope we get to go see it. And thank you very much. <laughs>